Hello future MDs! Before you watch this video, make sure that you answer the chemistry and math questionnaire first. If you haven't done yet, please pause this video, then go to the description below for the link to the questionnaire. By the way, these chemistry review questions were compiled by NMAT Study Buddy. I hope that this would be a great help for your NMAT preparation. If this channel has been a great help for you guys, feel free to share this with your friends who are also planning to take the NMAT. Before we start, I'd like to thank and introduce our lecturer here. His name is Eric Fuentes. He's an academic mentor for Abot Tala, which is a self-directed education and a former instructor in Ateneo de Manila University. Thank you so much, Sir Erico, for making this NMAT Chem review possible. Okay, let's start. Number one, which of the following is not an example of chemical change? Isa-isay natin yung options. Letter A, baking a cake. Sa pag-bake pa lang, marami ng chemical reactions na involved, kasama yung pag-rise ng dough. Nangyayari to dahil sa reaction ng harina turning into CO2, or carbon dioxide causing the dough to rise. Yung pag ng mga proteins, tsaka yung pag ng surfaces gamit yung Miller reaction, lahat ito ay chemical reaction. So, hindi na option yung letter A. Letter B, lighting a matchstick. Pag nagpapisindi ng posporo or kahit anong apoy, laging may nangyayaring combustion o yung reaction ng hydrocarbon with oxygen gas to form water vapor and carbon dioxide gas. Chemical change din ito, so hindi na siya option. Yung letter D, explosion of fireworks, nangyayari ito gamit yung reaction ng saltpeter o yung potassium nitrate with sulfur and elemental carbon. So, chemical change din yan. Hindi na siya option. Yung letter C, iron being coated with gold to prevent rusting, uh, hindi to chemical change dahil yung iron tsaka gold ay pinagpapatong lang. Pinapatong lang yung gold sa iron para hindi mag-rust. Kaya C, ang tamang sagot. Number two, which of the following is not correct on the group 1 elements? Pag sinabing group 1 elements, we are referring to this portion of the periodic table over here. Hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. Kaya ang sagot natin dito ay letter B kasi wala namang scandium dito sa column na yan. Okay? Number three, which of the following elements has the least electronegativity? Una sa lahat, ano nga ba yung electronegativity? Sa madaling salita, ito yung katakawan ng isang atom for electrons kapag nakabond na sila covalently. Remember na ang covalent bond ay nangyayari when two atoms share electrons. Minsan yung sharing na yun hindi fair. Yung atom na mas mataas yung electronegativity, kinukuha yung mga electrons more often or more closer to it than the other atom. Okay? Ngayon, yung electronegativity ay isa sa mga periodic trends na may estimate natin gamit yung location ng atom sa periodic table. Tumataas ang electronegativity going from left to right and going from bottom to top. Following this pattern, we note that radium has the least electronegativity among these choices. Number four, which of the following is the electron configuration of the ferric ion or the iron 3 plus ion? Okay. Now, ang electron configuration ay yung paraan natin para ma-describe yung distribution ng electrons sa mga orbital ng isang atom. And they are sorted by energy levels. May shortcut na paraan para malaman yung electron configuration ng isang atom based sa location nila sa periodic table. Tandaan lang natin yung S block, B block, D block, F block sa periodic table. Tsaka syempre yung 1S2 block sa taas. And that each row is represented by an energy level. Okay? Ngayon, ibibuild up natin yung electron configuration ng uh, elemental iron atom gamit yung periodic table starting from hydrogen to iron. Take note that th this is only iron in its neutral charge. Kaya hindi muna tayo magdatanggal or magdadagdag ng electrons dito. Okay? So starting from the 1s2 block, susundan natin ng 2s2 kasi yung susunod na set ng atoms ay lithium and beryllium. Nasa row 2 sila and they are in the S block. Susundan natin ng 2p6 sa row ng boron to neon followed by 3s2, 3p6, 4s2 and now we are going to cross the D block and we will apply minus 1 to the energy level sa D block. So it's in the 4d 
nasa 3D tayo dito ngayon. And dalagyan natin ng 6 electrons dahil hanggang kay iron lang naman tayo. Maglalagay ng electrons. Okay? Now, we have the electron configuration of iron in its neutral form. Paano ngayon kapag 3 plus ang kanyang net charge? <coughs> Kailangan natin magtanggal ng 3 electrons. Parang matirang charge ay positive 3. Uh, para magtanggal ng electrons, kailangan unahin natin yung 4s at yung 3d. So, tatanggalin natin yung 4s2, tapos yung isang electron sa 3d. Matitira sa atin ay 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d5, which is letter C over here. Okay? Number 5. The electron configuration of argon is shown below. How many valence electrons are there in this atom? Pag sinabing valence electrons, ito yung mga electrons na nasa highest energy level na orbitals. Sa electron configuration na to, ang highest energy level ay 3, which contains the 3s orbital containing 2 electrons and the 3p orbital containing 6 electrons. In total, it has 8 valence electrons. Which of the following is true regarding the atomic number of an atom? The correct answer here is letter A. The atomic number lagi siyang equal sa number of protons in an atom. Kapag nagbago ang net charge ng isang atom, like for example, naging positive siya, tatanggalan lang natin siya ng electrons. Pero yung number of protons, hindi nagbabago. Kapag naging negative naman siya, natitagan lang natin ng electrons. Pero yung number of protons, hindi nagbabago, equal pa rin siya sa atomic number. Number 7, which of the following molecules has the largest dipole moment? Isa-isay natin sila. Carbon tetrachloride. Yung molecular geometry niya ay tetrahedral. Yung bonds, naka-orient sila in equal angles, specifically 109.5. Okay. Pare-pareho lang din yung atoms na naka-bond sa carbon. That makes the bond polarities all the same as well. Dahil doon, lahat ng bond polarities cancel out, making it a non polar molecule. At dahil polar siya, wala siyang dipole moment. Letter B, hydrogen sulfide. Ang kanyang molecular geometry ay bent. Okay? At dahil bent siya, hindi nagka-cancel out yung bond polarities kasi nga hindi pantay yung orientation ng dalawang bonds. Therefore, it's polar and it has a dipole moment. Letter C, hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride kung gas siya. Linear ang kanyang molecular geometry. And since wala naman ng ibang bonds involved, we can conclude that it is highly polar due to the large electronegativity difference. Lastly, si carbon dioxide, linear siya. At dahil pantay yung orientation ng bonds and equal angles, the polarities cancel out, making it a non-polar molecule with no dipole moment. So the answer here is letter C, kasi mas pronounced yung electronegativity difference, yung Dispersion of charges towards chlorine, the negative, and positive for hydrogen is more evident here. Number eight, select the correct IUPAC name for this molecule over here. Okay, so now this is an organic chemistry topic. And in naming this molecule, we have to consider what our parent chain is. In this case, we will consider the five carbon ring here as our parent chain, parent chain being pentane. Ngayon, meron tayong mga substituents or yung mga nakakabit sa parent chain na dalawa methyl group. Okay? Ang mga methyl group meaning one carbon lang for this one and one carbon lang for the other one. We have to assign a locant number for each substituent over here. So, this is carbon number one, number two, number three, four and five ito. Now, uh, we have to make sure kasi that when we assign locant numbers, we give the lowest numbers possible over here. Kaya lalagyan natin ng 1 yung isang methyl dito, giving us 1, 3, dimethyl. Okay, ito yung dalawang substituents natin, followed by the parent chain na pentane, which is given to us by letter C. Number nine, why is carbon considered a unique element? The answer to this one is letter B. To a greater extent than any other element, carbon can bond to itself to form straight chains, branch chains, and rings. Yung property na to ay tinatawag na catenation. Okay? 
Carbon lang ang nakakagawa niyan. Carbon lang yung nakakagawa ng chains ng sarili niyang atom, paulit-ulit. At kung hindi dahil dito, walang life. Walang biomolecules, walang organic compounds, walang life sa universe ito. Okay? Number 10. According to the following energy profile, the rate of reaction from A to B is determined by... Okay, the rate of reaction is determined using the Arrhenius equation, which relates... Yung energy of activation, tsaka yung rate constant, yung, kung gaano, yung number na nagsasabi sa atin kung gaano kabilis ang isang chemical reaction. Paano nga ba nahanap ang activation energy? Yun yung distance ng energy level ng reactants natin na A towards our transition state over there, which is letter C. So that is an energy difference between C and A. Number 11, what is the difference between molarity and molality? Okay. Ang definition ng molarity, ito ay concentration ng isang solution defined by the number of moles ng solute divided by liters of solution. Okay? Yung molarity ay isang expression din naman ng concentration, pero ang definition niya ay moles ng solute divided by kilograms ng solvent. That is why the answer to this one is letter A. It's important to learn about molarity and molality kasi yung molarity, una sa lahat, ito yung ginagamit kadalasan sa mga stoichiometric calculation kung paano magtimpla ng particular na solution. At ito rin yung ginagamit natin sa pag-calculate ng equilibrium constant at ng uh, reaction rates. Okay? Molality naman ay mahalaga sa physical chemistry. Maraming mga equation ang nagde sa molality kasi nga independently natin tinitreat yung solute and solvent. Yung pinaka-common na example na gumagamit ng molality ay yung pag-calculate ng boiling point elevation and freezing point depression sa colligative properties of solutions. Okay? Number 12, the carbon-14 dating technique, also known as radiocarbon dating, is used to estimate the age of fossils. Well, syempre, yung fossils na remnants ng mga dinosaurs at ibang prehistoric life ay may carbon. Minerals, rocks, and stones, they don't have a lot of carbon. Well, kung meron man konti, kaya fossils ang tamang sagot dito kasi silang lang yung may carbon naman. Number 13, which of the following electromagnetic waves is used as treatment for cancer? The correct answer is gamma rays. Gamma rays have enough penetrating power to reach the cancer cells inside the body. Naaabot nila yun. And Cancer cells respond to it. They get destroyed in turn. So that's why letter C is the correct answer. Number 14. Arrange the alpha, beta, and gamma rays in increasing order of penetrating powers. Well, bilang guide, ito yun. Uh, alpha particles cannot pass through paper kasi nga medyo massive sila. Okay? Kaya hanggang paper lang sila. Beta particles, they can pass through paper. Pero... Aluminum hindi na kaya kasi medyo massive pa rin sila in a way. Gamma particles, on the other hand, can pass through paper and aluminum kasi they are really minuscule particles na and they're bordering uh, radiation-like behavior na. So, gamma can pass through paper and aluminum and lead can reduce the amount of gamma radiation that can pass through it. That is why a lot of radiation-proof centers or shelters are lined with lead yung mga pader nilang lalagyan nila ng layer ng lead para mabawasan or mapigilan yung pagpasok ng gamma particles sa kanilang lugar. And the correct answer here is letter B. Okay? Number 15. An ideal gas, also called a perfect gas, is a hypothetical gas consisting of particles with zero volume and no attraction from each other. Okay. Yung ideal gas equation na PV is equal to nRT, it's only possible to formulate that if we assume na yung part gas particles hindi sila nag-occupy ng space tapos hindi sila attracted sa isa't isa. Okay? Kapag ka may intermolecular attraction tsaka mayroong volume correction tsaka tayo gagamit ng mga non-ideal gas equations tulad ng Van der Waals equation, redlich wong at iba pa. Number 16, the combined gas law is expressed by letter D. Initial pressure times initial volume all over initial temperature is equal to final pressure times final volume all over final temperature. Number 17. Charles' law is expressed by... Okay, ano muna yung Charles' law? Charles' law 
is letter B, V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. Sinasabi nito na ang volume at temperature ng isang gas ay directly proportional. Kapag tumataas ang temperature or umiinit yung surroundings ng isang gas, lumalaki rin yung volume niya. Okay? 18. Boyle's law is expressed by letter C. P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2. Ano nga ba ang Boyle's law? Sinasabi nito na kapag tinataasin natin yung pressure or pinipisil natin yung gas, yung volume niya ay bumababa din. Okay. The Galois-Sachs law shows a direct relationship between temperature and this is letter A, pressure. Tignan natin itong dalawang cases na to, yung nasa left and nasa right. Both of them have gases, the same amount of gas, with the same volume. Pareho lang yung volume ng dalawang containers na to. Okay? Hindi nagbabago. Doon sa nasa kanan, tinaasan yung temperature. Okay? Take note na kapag tinaasan natin yung temperature, we are introducing more energy doon sa gas particles. Kapag tumataas yung energy ng gas particles na yun, tumataas yung kinetic energy nila and mas frequent, mas dumadalas yung pagbangga nila doon sa walls ng container. Kaya mas malaki yung nararamdaman na pressure ng container kapag mas mataas yung temperature. Number 20. The second law of thermodynamics states that the entropy of an isolated system increases in a spontaneous process. Spontaneous meaning kusa. Okay? Yung mga proseso na kusang nangyayari, kadalasan yung entropy nila o yung gulo, yung amount of disorder in the system increases. Okay? Take note pala na sinasabi dito, it's isolated system. Isolated system meaning walang energy in going in and going out. Kaya, entropy lang ang nagiging factor dito sa pagiging spontaneous or non-spontaneous na mga proseso na to. Okay? Number 21, which of the following is synonymous with the law of conservation of energy? Yung law of conservation of energy, it says that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It just gets transformed from one form to another. Okay, so, ibig sabihin, na-account natin yung energy for every process na nangyayari. Okay, dapat na-account natin yun. And this is the first law of thermodynamics. Number 22, what is the condition for a spontaneous reaction? Spontaneity is measured by the Gibbs free energy or delta G, and dapat ang delta G ay negative. Okay. 23, for a spontaneous reaction at all temperatures, the correct thermodynamic conditions are... Spontaneity is described by the quantity delta G or yung Gibbs free energy and this is dependent on delta H minus T delta S over here. Sabi dito all temperatures, kaya we will only consider delta H and delta S as the factors in this problem. Okay? We want the process to be spontaneous. Kapag spontaneous, dapat negative ang delta G. Okay? Negative. Para maging negative ito, mas maganda na dapat negative din yung minuend natin, di ba? Kasi kapag negative yung minuend, mas mataas yung chances na maging negative yung buong uh, difference. And to make sure na negative yung difference, dapat ito ay positive, okay? Negative minus positive over here will give us a more negative result. And this means delta H should be less than 0 and delta S should be greater than 0 which is letter... 24. It is impossible to have a spontaneous reaction if spontaneity is described by the quantity delta G, which is equal to delta H minus T delta S. So, to be spontaneous, dapat ang delta G ay negative. Delta G is negative. So, para maging negative ito, dapat negative din yung delta H, tapos positive yung delta S. Kasi negative minus positive will give us a negative result. What if it's the other way around? Paano kung positive yung delta H minus negative na delta S? Temperature is always positive, by the way. So, this will give us positive minus negative will always be positive. Kaya impossible ito na maging spontaneous. So, it's impossible to be spontaneous kung Delta H is positive, tapos delta S is negative. 25. The equilibrium position corresponds to which letter on the graph of the course of the reaction? This is a graph of the Gibbs energy versus the course of the reaction. The correct answer here is C. Okay? 
the Gibbs energy of, of a system is at its minimum at equilibrium. 26. In a sample of pure water, only one of the following statements is always true at all conditions of temperature and pressure. Which one is always true? The correct answer is D. Yung amount ng hydronium and hydroxide ay pantay kung pure water siya. Okay? So, the thing is, kapag iba na yung temperature and pressure, hindi na 7 ang neutral pH. Okay? And uh, nagbabago na yung pH scale at that time. Pero we are always sure na yung amount ng hydronium and hydroxide ay pantay pa rin. Okay? In the reaction, in the aqueous solution, the acid reactant is blank and its conjugate base product is blank. In this problem, we are being asked kung ano ba yung acid or ano yung H plus donor dito. And ang base natin, Ito yung H plus acceptor. Okay. So, tingnan natin ngayon yung reactants natin dito. Mapapansin natin na after the reaction, itong H na to ay nailipat dito. Making HSO4 our acid. HSO4 minus or the bisulfate ion our acid. And methylamine as our base. Okay. Now, we are being asked what is the conjugate base. The conjugate base is basically the acid without the H plus becomes the conjugate base. Vice versa, the base with the H plus becomes the conjugate acid. Conjugate acid. Kanina nalaman natin na yung bisulfate ion, siya yung acid. So, nung natanggalan siya ng H+, siya na ngayon yung conjugate base. Tapos yung methylamine kanina na nakatanggap ng H+, siya na ngayon yung conjugate acid. So, to complete the statement, the correct answer is letter A. 28. Which of the following groups consist of salts that all form basic solutions in water? The correct answer is A. Bakit? Kasi yung sodium carbonate, it produces carbonate ion, which is a base. It can accept hydrogen. Sodium fluoride can produce F-, which is also basic. This one can give us CH3OO- uh, it's also a base. Kasi may negative charge siya and may electron pairs, right? Sodium cyanide will give us a cyanide ion, which has an electron pair as well, which is a base. All of these guys can accept H+, making them bases, okay? B and C have ammonium chloride, okay? Ammonium chloride produces NH4+, which is actually acidic nature, making B and C incorrect answers. 29. The stronger the acid, it is known that its conjugate base would be weaker. Number 30. Which of the following is a weak acid? The correct answer here is either A or C. It's the same, hydrofluoric acid. Mayroong listahan ng mga common strong acids. And to name some, they are hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, hydroiodic acid, and chloric acid. Number 31. This law states that if a substance is broken down into constituent elements, the constituents will have the same mass proportion regardless of the quantity of the original substance. This describes yung law of definite proportion. So nasabi lang niya na yung percentages ng mga elements sa isang compound so, same lang din siya kapag kahalimbawa, uh, tangke ng tubig versus baso ng tubig, pareho lang sila ng percentage ng hydrogen at ng oxygen. Okay? Kahit na Pacific Ocean pa siya, pare-pareho lang naman silang water, pare-pareho lang silang H2O, kaya pare-pareho lang din yung percentages ng hydrogen and oxygen doon sa mga samples na yun. Okay? 32. Determine the oxidation state of platinum in the following complex. 
So, ito ay isang complex ion. Ibig sabihin na ang oxidation state ng platinum times 1, kasi mag-isa lang naman siya, plus yung oxidation state ng chlorine times 4, kasi apat sila, dapat ang total nito ay negative 2. Okay? So, kunwari ito ay x. Ano? So, this is x plus, alam natin na ang oxidation state ng chlorine lagi ay negative 1. So, 4 times negative 1 should be negative 2. Simplifying this, magiging x plus negative 4 is equal to negative 2. Okay? And this gives us x is equal to positive 2, which is letter A. 33. Which of the following element has the largest atomic radius? Ang atomic radius ay isa na namang periodic trend na ma-estimate natin gamit yung location ng mga atom sa periodic table. Going from left to right, atomic radius decreases and bottom to top, atomic radius also decreases. Following this pattern, malalaman natin na ang sodium ang may pinaka maliit na atomic radius. Okay. 34. Which of the following is not a pure substance? Okay. So, pag sinabi natin pure substance, pwede itong element, basically gawa lang sa isang atom, or pwede siyang compound na two or more atoms chemically combined together, meaning may sharing or donation of electrons na naganap. Okay? The correct answer to this one is letter B. Okay? A, C, and D are all elemental substances. Gawa lang sila sa gold, gawa sila sa diamond, and gawa sila sa mercury. Ang sterling silver ay isang alloy or mixture ng silver at isa pang metal. Kadalasan ay copper. Okay? Bagamat gawa siya sa two or more atoms, yung silver na yun at yung additional metal na usually copper, they are not chemically combined. Ano lang sila? Mixture lang sila in an alloy form. Okay? So, sterling silver is not a pure substance. 35. This is the energy released or spent when an electron is added to a neutral atom. Ito ay electron affinity. Pag nagdadagdag ng electron sa neutral atom, ito ay electron affinity. Kaya pag nagtatanggal naman tayo ng electron, yun yung ionization energy. Okay? 36. Combustion of one mole of heptane will... Tingnan muna natin kung ano yung heptane. Ano? Ang heptane ay C7H16. Okay? Alright, so kapag isulat natin ang kanya combustion reaction, C7H16 plus O2 gives us CO2 plus H2O. Okay, laging ganito ang format ng combustion reaction. Okay, laging meron tayong fuel, oxygen gas, yielding carbon dioxide and water vapor. Okay, kung ibabalance natin yung reaction, always remember na kapag combustion ng reaction, what we always balance is the carbon, giving us this, 7 dito, and then yung hydrogen, para magkaroon ng 16 hydrogen atoms sa right side, we put 8 here. Okay, now, the tricky part is the oxygen, okay? This one has 14 oxygens, and this one has 8 oxygen atoms, giving us 22 oxygen atoms. That's why we must put 11 moles of oxygen atoms here. So, combustion of 1 mole of heptane will require 11 moles of oxygen and will produce 7 moles of carbon dioxide and 8 moles of water. So, the correct answer here is it will yield 7 moles of carbon Dioxide. 37. Which does not describe a neutralization reaction? Well, it's none of the above. A, B, and C, lahat sila karakteristik ng isang neutralization reaction. Reaction siya ng acid at base. Ang product ay laging isang salt or ionic compound and water. For example, HBrO3 or bromic acid reacting with potassium hydroxide. Pag magpapalit sila ng ions, this will give us water. And our salt here is potassium bromate. Okay. So, it's none of the above. 
neutralization reactions are also exothermic by nature. Number 38, what happened to iron in this reaction? Yung iron dito sa reactant side is in its elemental form. Okay? And it has no charge, meaning its oxidation state is equal to zero. Dito naman, ionic compound na siya. Okay? And ang ferric oxide ay gawa sa ferric ion na may positively charged dahil dito. And yung oxygen ay 2 minus. So ang oxidation state niya dito ay 3 plus. From 0 to 3 plus, tumaas yung kanyang oxidation state. Ibig sabihin yung charge niya ay naging positive. So electrons were lost. Electrons were lost. Kasi nga ang electron ay negative, di ba? Nung nawala yung negative charge, naging positive yung charge ng iron. Yung pagkawala ng electrons or losing of electrons, this process is called oxidation. Okay? Ibig sabihin si iron ay na-oxidize at nawala siya ng electrons. So ang tamang sagot dito ay letter C. Number 39, which is not a factor affecting chemical reaction rates. Okay? So the correct answer here is none of the above. Okay? Letter A, nature of reactants. Well, kung solid, liquid, or gas sila, it matters kasi yung state ng reactant tells us kung gano'ng karaming kinetic energy yung meron sila. At yung mas mataas yung kinetic energy nila, mas mataas yung tendency nila na magpanggaan. Therefore, making more effective reactions. Okay? Ganun din sa temperature. Kung mataas yung temperature, mas mataas yung kinetic energy, mas frequent yung collisions or yung banggaan ng mga ng mga molecules or ng mga atoms making the reactions more effective. Letter C, surface area. This is an important factor kasi kung mataas ang surface area ng mga reactants, mas madalas yung contact. Okay? Making the reactions also more effective. Okay? So all of those are factors. Kaya yung sagot dito ay none of the above. Number 40, convert 5 moles of carbon dioxide to grams. So, we have 5 moles. We want to turn it to grams. Ang conversion factor dito lagi from moles to grams ay ang molar mass ng substance. Okay? So, ano nga ba ang molar mass ng carbon dioxide? So, this is molar mass ng carbon which is 12.01 times 1. Keeping as 12.01 grams per mole. Isa lang kasi yung carbon dito plus 16 na molar mass ng oxygen times 2, which is 32 grams per mole, giving us 44.01 grams per mole. Estimate na natin sa 44. Okay? So, we have 5 moles times 44 grams per mole. Cancel yung mole dito, giving us 200 20 grams. Okay. 41. How much water in grams is produced after complete combustion of 2 moles of methane? Okay. Okay. So, a methane ay CH4. So, nabing combustion, ito yung reaction na yun. We have methane million fuel natin plus oxygen gas react. Uh, reacting to form carbon dioxide and water vapor. But to balance natin, isa lang yung carbon, we have to make 2 moles of water here to balance out the hydrogen. And to balance out the oxygen, we need to put 2 here as well. Okay. So now we, we have 2 moles of methane. Ano? So the mass of water produced, we start with 2 moles of methane. Convert muna natin siya to water. Okay? So, ang stoichiometric ratio dito is 1 mole of methane will produce 2 moles of water. Okay? So, we have here 1 mole CH4 producing 2 moles of water. Okay? Cancel out na yung CH4 dito. And now we have to multiply something that has moles of water below. 
sa baba para mag-cancel siya. Tapos grams na ng water dito sa taas. Okay? And this is the molar mass of water. Molar mass of water is what? Uh, 1.01 times 2 or 2.02. This is for hydrogen. And then 16, molar mass ng oxygen times 1, 16, giving us 18.02 grams per mole. Or round up na natin sa 18, ano? 18 grams per 1 mole of water. Ayan. Canceling water dito. And now our equation is complete. 2 times 2 times 18, giving us 72 grams of water. 42, which is not an assumption of the kinetic molecular theory of gases. Okay, so the kinetic molecular theory uh, gives us a visualization of how gases behave in their ideal form. Okay, and in the ideal form or in the perfect gas form, there are no van der Waals forces or intermolecular forces between the molecules. So the sabi rin sa kinetic molecular theory na ang temperature I sukat, or it's a measure of the kinetic energy of all the gas molecules, and the collisions among gas molecules is perfectly inelastic. Okay, and of course their motion is constant and random. Forty-three. This gas law relates volume to gas temperature, so this is Charles' law, which tells us na kapag tumataas ang temperature or umiinit yung yung gas sample the volume also increases. 44. Which of the following is a solution? The correct answer here is vinegar. Kasi technically, ang vinegar ay aqueous solution ng acetic acid. Ketchup, peanut butter, and milkshake are examples of mixtures. Okay? Gawa sila sa iba't ibang substances na binlend lang together. They are not chemically combined. Blended lang sila. But in the case of vinegar, ang acetic acid ay nakadissociate from CH3, COOH, plus water, will dissociate into the acetate ion and the hydronium ion over here, making it a solution. Number 45, how much salt is needed to create 8 liters of 2 molar sodium chloride solution? the molecular weight of sodium chloride is given as 58 grams per mole. Okay. The molarity is 2 moles of sodium chloride per liter of solution. Okay. So, let's find out what is uh, the mass of sodium chloride needed. Starting with 2 moles sodium chloride per liter of solution. This is our molarity. 1 liter of solution times. We multiply the 8 liters over here. Cancel that. Huh? And we multiply the 58 grams of sodium chloride per mole of sodium chloride, the molecular weight. Giving us 2 times 8 times 58, ending up with 928 grams of sodium chloride. Letter C. 46. Which of the following signifies an acid? The correct answer here is POH is greater than 7. An acid does not have bitter taste. Acids usually have a sour taste. Acids do not feel slippery to the touch. As a matter of fact, they feel aqueous or water-like. Or in extreme cases, it will give you a burning sensation. Acids can turn blue litmus paper to red. And acids have a pH less than 7 and a pOH greater than 7. That is why letter D is the correct answer. For numbers 47 to 50, in an experiment, 5 grams of ammonia reacts with 3 grams of oxygen, represented by this chemical equation on the right side of the screen which is the limiting reactant and which is the excess reactant. In these kinds of problems, it's very important for me to know the moles of each reactant. Lagi yan. Lagi yung ginagawa sa mga ganitong klaseng uh, reaction stoichiometry problems. 
lagi kong inaalam yung number of moles of each reactant. So, to do that, we need the molar mass of each reactant. For ammonia, that is 14 molar mass ng nitrogen plus 1 na molar mass ng hydrogen times 3 kasi tatlo yung hydrogen in this case. So that is 17 grams per mole. Whereas, yung molar mass naman ng oxygen, gas, is equal to 16 times 2 since dalawa yung oxygen dun. And that is 32 grams per mole. Now we can solve for the number of moles of each reactant. For ammonia, that is 5 grams times a factor here na grams yung nasa baba and nasa taas yung moles ng ammonia. Ginawa natin to para mag-cancel yung grams, right? And dahil dyan, kailangan yung 17 nasa baba kasi 17 grams per 1 mole, giving us a value of 0 0.294 moles of ammonia. For oxygen, ganun din. 3 grams ng oxygen times for every 1 mole of oxygen gas, mayroong 6, 32 rather, grams of oxygen. Cancel yung grams. Giving us 0 0.294. 0 0.09375 moles of oxygen gas. At dahil kakailanganin natin tong mga values sa to, definitely, sa susunod na mga problems hanggang number 50, ilagay na natin sila dito sa taas. Okay? So that we can refer to them immediately. Okay? So again, for reaction stoichiometry problems, it's very important for you guys to know the number of moles of each reactant kagad. Yung kagad una yung solve and ilagay niyo na kagad in a place where you can conveniently see them immediately. Now, ang tinatanong, alin yung limiting reactant and alin yung excess reactant? So basically, tinatanong dito ko, alin yung sa sobra at alin yung magkukulang dito sa mga values na to. So for that, let's find out kung ano yung moles ng oxygen gas needed to be consumed by ammonia. Magsimula tayo sa 0 0.294 moles ng ammonia. And gamit yung stoichiometric coefficients na 4 is to 5, na ang 4 moles ng ammonia, nangangailangan ng 5 moles ng oxygen gas. Let's do that na. So, 4 moles ammonia sa baba, 5 moles, ammonia, uh, 5 moles of oxygen gas rather sa taas. Cancel yung moles ng ammonia. And this gives us 0 0.3675 moles ng oxygen gas. Now, let's have a look at the significance of this number. Okay, sabi daw, yung 0 0.294 moles ng ammonia na meron tayo, ang kailangan daw niya ay 3.675 moles ng oxygen gas. Yan yung required na amount ng oxygen gas para maubos yung 0 0.294 moles ng ammonia. E kaso, ilan ba yung moles ng oxygen gas na meron tayo? Meron tayong 0 0.09375 moles ng oxygen gas lang. Ito ay kulang. Okay? Dahil ang kailangan natin 0 0.3675, ang meron lang tayo ay 0 0.09375. Therefore, dahil kulang ang amount ng oxygen gas natin, O2 yung limiting, oxygen gas yung limiting reactant, and ammonia yung excess. Number 48, how many grams of nitrogen monoxide are formed? Sa problem nito, aalamin natin yung amount na mabubuo ng isa sa mga product, yung nitrogen monoxide. Okay? At dahil dito, kailangan natin yung amount ng limiting reactant natin. Okay? Gamit yung amount ng limiting reactant natin na oxygen gas over here. Ito yung limiting reactant natin. Aalamin natin yung amount na mabubuo ng nitrogen monoxide. So question, bakit nga pala hindi natin gagamitin yung amount ng excess reactant? Well, for the reason na hindi lahat ito ay magamit. Some of the ammonia will not be used in the reaction. Kaya hindi siya magandang gamitin na, na quantity to predict the product. Gagamitin lang natin yung amount ng reactant na magiging fully consumed in this reaction. 
So now, to get the mass of nitrogen monoxide, we will start with the 0 0.09375 moles ng acting limiting reactant. To convert natin muna siya to moles of nitrogen monoxide, our target quantity over here. And for this conversion to happen, gagamitin natin yung molar ratio na 4 is to 4. Anong wala rin nangyari. Okay? And now we need here a quantity that will help us convert the moles of mo nitrogen monoxide to the grams of nitrogen monoxide. And this quantity is the molar mass. So calculate muna natin yung molar mass ng nitrogen monoxide. That is 14 for nitrogen times 1 lang naman kasi isa lang siya. 16 for oxygen na isa lang din. That is 30 grams per mole. Scratch lang to. Scratch quantity lang to. So yung 30 grams nandito for 1 mole. And this calculation over here will give us 0 0.09375 times 4 divided by 4 times 30 over 1 giving us 2.25 grams of nitrogen monoxide, which is letter A. Number 49, how much of the excess reactant remains after the limiting reactant is completely consumed in grams? Kanina nalaman natin na yung total amount ng excess reactant is 0 0.294 moles. Okay? So some of this will be used. Some of this will be unused. Okay? So kapag in mo yung unused and unused, that should give us a 0 0.294 moles. Diba? In this problem, what we want to get is the amount that remains. Diba? So that's the unused over here. So, so to solve for the unused amount, let's solve first for the moles of ammonia that was used. Starting with the 0 0.09375 moles ng ating limiting reactant. Lagi tayong magsisimula sa limiting reactant. Aalamin natin kung ilan yung moles ng ammonia na magagamit niya. Right? And this will be moles of O2. Ang mole ratio nila ay 4 is to 5. Uh, 4 moles ng ammonia, 5 moles ng oxygen gas. And this will give us 0 0.075 moles ng ammonia na magagamit. Ito lang yung amount ng ammonia na makukonsume sa reaction. And naaalamin natin yung moles ng ammonia na unused. Gamit yung total, 0 0.294 moles na ammonia na total na binigay sa atin, sasubtract natin yung 0 0.075 moles ammonia na, na nagamit which gives us 0 0.219 moles of ammonia na natira. Okay. And converting this to grams, the mass of ammonia na natira is equal to 0 0.219 moles ammonia. Kanina, nalaman natin na molar mass ng ammonia is 17 grams per mole. And this is 3.73 grams, which is letter E. Number 50. How many moles of the limiting reactant are there initially? Well, Nakalculate natin yung value na to as this one, 0 0.09375 moles of oxygen gas. However, we have two choices that correspond to this answer similarly. Letter C, 0 0.094 and 0 0.09375 in letter D. Which should we choose here? Now, if we are being strict with the significant figures, we will have to consider the 3.000 grams of oxygen that was given here. This one has four significant figures, okay? And to get our answer na 0 0.09375, we divided it by the molar mass. Okay? Now, 
when we calculate significant figures in reaction stoichiometry, we disregard the number of significant figures ng molar mass. And that is a general rule. Okay? We only consider yung given masses or volumes or kung ano man yung given sa problem in considering the significant figures. So, that in mind, we will use the same number of significant figures of the given to us, the four significant figures. And this leads us to our answer, which is letter D.